our conference uh, and then get a little bit into kind of walking through the the uh, application and talking about the different aspects of that. Uh, of course, we try every every conference to have a very diverse uh, conference. Uh, I always tell those who ask uh, that it's impossible to cover the entire span of singing and every style and uh, all the aspects of singing and teaching singing in one conference. But uh, if you come to three conferences or more, uh, surely we try to make sure we kind of cover the waterfront uh, on our profession. Uh, and so when while one conference may have a little more maybe classical music theater leaning, another may have more mixed in and other kinds of uh, sessions related to pedagogy or independent studio, or collaborative pianists, et cetera. So we do try to serve uh, as many as we can in each conference in a variety of ways. And that's where you come in as a presenter. Uh, we have quite a few uh, breakout sessions that happen at every conference. So uh, our, the days of our conference are structured where we have usually two plenary sessions, a morning and an afternoon, and then those are surrounded with a number of major events in the evening. Uh, and also a huge uh, gala banquet the last night, which this time will be very special as, uh, as we'll be wrapping up our 75th anniversary celebration uh, of Nats. So I'm going to just quickly uh, change my screen. It shows, uh, hopefully you're seeing uh, the web page and the, the page to the call for presentations. Uh, Obviously, uh, we highlight a number of topics every year uh, um, that those who help organize the conference uh, are particularly encouraging. They're not limiting. We're not limiting uh, those right. to those topics. Okay, so uh, we are uh, encouraging uh, proposals from those topics. And so we want to have a variety of topics presented. We also want to allow people to, there's Karen, she's joined us. Uh, and so we're glad to have you with us, Karen. Thank you. Um, you and so I can hear you. Great. And so we have a variety of uh, sessions. And so we want uh, you to feel free to use your expertise, of course, and bring that to the conference. And so while we list these topics, they're not certainly exclusive. Uh, they're just things that uh, sometimes uh, lean into some topics we want to highlight in a particular conference, or also sometimes they're a topic that uh, was minimally covered at the, at the previous conference, and we want to make sure we have more content related to that. Uh, so. There's some instructions here, and if you click on uh, submit a presentation proposal, of course, it goes to the application page, hopefully. There it goes. No, it didn't go. Oh, yes, there it goes. So you uh, obviously can choose a title, uh, choose uh, a category. If you don't see one of those categories that's obvious, feel free to use the other button and uh, put in uh, a category that you think uh, applies to your session. Uh, I encourage uh, want to attend our conference. Uh, and uh, of course, then there's a place for you to put uh, some needs that you have. We always have uh, uh, projectors available, uh, audio vi video playback. Uh, piano is available in many rooms, uh, and so uh, you should bring your own laptop or whatever kind of uh, me uh, electronic media player you want to use to uh, assist you in your presentation. Now, the abstract, I think, is really important because we try to use as much of this as possible as the description in the program book. 
So I think as you're thinking about um, the abstract, really think of it as a little marketing piece, as if you were trying to get as many attendees at the NAS for, to choose your session over the other break, breakout sessions. So you might want to think about uh, the takeaways that you want uh, people your session uh, and how, who, it, who it might appeal to specifically uh, and how what kinds of things people will take away that they can immediately apply in their independent studio or at their institution. Uh, and then you want to click the button and attach uh, a narrative and we'll show you how to do that. Obviously, there's some information about you as a presenter. We really are encouraging this time uh, joint presentations with at least two presenter, two or more presenters uh, on sessions this time. We found that those are, are much more interactive. Uh, they tend to be attractive to those who attend our conference, and they uh, just create a different kind of uh, energy, I think, in the room. So there's room for you to list at least uh, as many as six presenters. Uh, and the one thing you'll want to, whoever uploads the actual uh, presentation application, you want to make sure that you have 150 word bio from each of your presenters and their headshot because you'll be asked to upload those in the application. And we ask those from everybody uh, because it's really helpful when we go to build the program that we've already collected all that information and that those we've uh, select to present in the conference uh, don't have to contact it again to all this information a second time. You will be prompted to put in an email address of someone you know who can recommend uh, send a short recommendation about you as a presenter um, and the great energy that you will bring to the conference because of your great topic and uh, you have to do nothing on this except put that email address in and that person will automatically be sent an email link to fill out a, a short recommendation form and it is not long it is very short and uh, and so you might want to pre-warn uh, the person you're asking to do that uh, that they will get an email and you can't submit an email recommendation or some kind of other document because it all goes in the system so they'll get an automatic link so once you finish this page you'll be asked to uh, put in this code down here to make sure you're not a uh, that's trying to spam our system and you click save and it will take you to the next page and that's the page where you can kind of review everything you've uh, submitted so far and that's where you will upload uh, and attach the headshots and uh, your PDF of your longer version of your uh, conference proposal and then you'll click submit and you'll be finished mm -hmm. uh, so those are that's kind of the outline of the process uh, and and how how things flow uh, in a, in making your application I want to add uh, do want to mention a couple of things about your attached document. I think one of the things that helps the review panel as much as possible is for you to do a couple of things in that document. Certainly outline a little more in detail what, what your topic is about. Uh, and I think it's always important to, uh, to give a few bullet points or a few things that you think are really important takeaways that the people will who attend your session will will receive from being there. Uh, it, it may be some resources that you're providing and handing out. Uh, it may be uh, some particular tools that you've developed and you're wanting to share with other people. Uh, it may be exposure to new and diverse repertoire or new works or uh, are important or it might be uh, a variety of reasons that and takeaways that you want people to have uh, from leaving your session. I also think it's important for you to state 
that particularly if there's a certain angle to your presentation that you're really appealing to teachers who teach children, for instance. Um, it's important to say that and just say it up front that that's the kind of target group for your presentation. Uh, one of the things we hope to do in the program next year is put some tags on sessions that help direct uh, our attendees to sessions that might apply to them more directly to them uh, as an independent studio teacher, as a collaborative pianist, uh, as a teacher, etc. So we really want uh, you to really state those kinds of things, what kind of audience that you're trying to reach. And certainly some presentations are widely applicable and that is not a negative for it to be widely appl uh, applicable at all. Uh, but we do want to make sure that you th have thought through and you're telling us what you think the audience is. Um, I also think that it's nice to write in, a, in an energetic style that, you know, that think about that you're reaching this panel and you want to convince them that this is going to be a really top notch proposal uh, presentation and something that's really going to energize those who are going to be here. Karen, you have anything you want to add before we go yeah. on? Yeah, um, just thinking about when the first time that I ever did a presentation, I was really shy about it um, and just wondered if my idea was even something that would be anybody would be interested in. And my thing has always been about uh, the voice from the beginning of life to the end of life and how it changes through that. And um, it, if you ha are doing a presentation for the first time, you need to kind of going through the process of preparing that presentation um, is a really good creative and scholarly thing to do and it's a big contribution to the arts and so you should feel very good about that and if you have a different slant on things than anybody else does or you think you do you probably do have something really interesting to offer and see if you can find that kernel that you want to include that is exceptional and unusual and, and needed, uh, and needed we maybe, perhaps it just needs to be highlighted of, among all that we do in our studios and in performing and uh, just a slant on things that's a little different. And then going through the process, it really helps to um, actually make up a mock-up of a PowerPoint presentation, for instance, if you're going to use one. And, and think about how many words you want to put on a slide or do you want to go with more pictures or do you want to go with more diagrams do you want to use prezi or are you going to use a typical kind of powerpoint but what works best for you and, and is best for your personality and how you present and doing that actually helps to inform what you're going to put on your um, what you're going to write about this presentation when you're submitting your documents to us. And we can almost pick up your character in how you write. So as Alan had said, to have, make it kind of uplifting in your speech, even practice saying things and you'll, you'll actually write it out better too. Um, I encourage you to practice doing these presentations in advance. Um, and we can talk about too a little later about um, how to share the time with your co-presenter if you're doing it with others as well, so. Great. I think you bring up a really uh, important point and that is uh, what kinds of presentation tools you're gonna use. And uh, many of our presenters use a variety of, of tools and equally effectively or don't use a PowerPoint at all. Mm -hmm. and and have great presentations so it's by no no means is it expected that you have a powerpoint or high tech uh gizmos and whirly gigs and all those kind of things that are going to wow people uh wow them with your expertise and your presentation skills and your you know charming energetic personality and the great knowledge that you have and that you really have a passion to share with others um, if you're using a PowerPoint, I always I always think it's important to uh, not, you know, print everything you're going to say on the PowerPoint. Uh, I, I like I used to do that a lot, and I, and I, I realized they're not really listening to me very much because they're reading ahead. Uh, even if I 
have bulleted uh, points on my PowerPoint. Uh, and so you might say in using short words or pictures associated with uh, a word is, is something that's nice. Uh, embedding audio in uh, PowerPoint can be problematic in certain platforms. So make sure that uh, you get done effectively and don't assume that uh, that you're going to have a, a Wi-Fi connection that's always reliable. If you're planning to go onto the internet in any way, I, uh, we strongly suggest you use a hot uh, hotspot on your cell phone and connect to that or maybe one of your co-presenters has that um, that's much more reliable we tend to not have Wi-Fi available in the, in the conference rooms uh, because it's extremely expensive at conference centers to pay to have that access uh, and so we found it much cheaper and equally uh, accessible for people to use hotspots and, and we've had no problem with that so that's just another consideration you're going to want to make as you're thinking about your presentation. Uh, I think that uh, as you, another aspect of things is, are you planning for audience participation in some way? Um, if you are, really think through if, if you know, if I do a lot of presentations uh, on the use of the straw uh, and SOVT exercises. So, you know, I'm always thinking about do I have enough straws? Do I have the right sizes? Do I have, you know, how many might I have in my room? And I will say we we probably will have around a thousand attendees uh, in Knoxville, and we'll probably have four, maybe five breakouts. So you can see how the larger audience might be divided up. And of course, sometimes we have one break, obviously we have some breakouts that are more popular than others. So you just kind of have to plan for the best. And if your topics really, you think is going to be appealing and, uh, and you hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm going to be there. That's probably means a lot of people are going to be there. So you want to just be prepared with enough resources. Uh, if you want to use a handout, if you're going to do a handout, make sure you have plenty. There will be uh, people at the doors to assist with hand book, which is uh, an app that everybody can download and has the complete program book on it. And it also has the ability uh, for you to upload uh, either a handout or the PowerPoint of your presentation in advance uh, and it's, it'll be there and attached in guidebook. So that's another way that you can avoid uh, printing photocopies uh, and carrying around a lot of handouts uh, could be by just using that opportunity and uploading your handout to guidebook. Uh, most people, 95% of our attendees downloaded it last time and used it effectively. It's a great way for uh, people to message and connect with one another at the conference and it's also of course a good way uh, to have resources on there for your sessions and your your description of your session you, your headshot will be in guidebook as well uh, in addition to the hard copy of the program book so there are lots of ways for people to connect with your session uh, keep notes uh, and all of those kinds of things so if you're Thinking about the kinds of resources you need for your session, just be thinking about the aspect that, you know, the room will probably be set up in straight row kind of theater seating. Uh, some of the rooms will have a slightly elevated stage. Others might have no stage, so you'd be on the floor. Um, there usually will be t plenty of time the day before or the evening uh, before your presentation for you to check out the room, see what the needs are, see if everything is there that you might need. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you're there in enough time. I will say that we have a very packed schedule and there's not a lot of, of time uh, for flipping between 
presenters or, or between sessions. So we do encourage and we do have monitors that help uh, usher people out and speakers out into the hallway if there's a short time period between the next session so that the next group of presenters can uh, be prepared and be relaxed and get their things ready to go. So we do have staff, we have volunteers that are there to help uh, facilitate everybody getting set up and and dealing with issues that might arise. So, so we want you to be comfortable so that you're able to really shine and present the content that you've been chosen to present. And um, then maybe Alan, maybe a few. What else do you want to add, Karen? Yeah, um, I wondered about should things be scripted or should it be off the cuff or should it be an outline that you have in your in preparing to present those are that's all your call um, i can say when i've heard things that are scripted that you're actually just reading things um, it isn't as fun as if you are a little bit more off book than that so i'd highly recommend that and it's going to be more recepted uh, by received by your audience and then also keeping your a managing of time. I am guilty often of, I have a particular area I like to talk about more than another area and I spend a lot of time on that. And then I don't get to all of it. And then I find I have to speed up at the end to get everything in that I wanted. And everybody can tell that you're speeding up that you haven't really paced it. And all of a sudden you're flipping through slides and you decide, oh, I'll skip that one. That's not important. Well, yes, it was. And so that's really important to train yourself and practice to do that. And I'm guilty of every one of those things. Um, also, while you're up there talking with people, and this is anything where you're presenting or talking or, or you know, doing a master class or anything, is we're seeing everything that's going on in the audience. They, and so you'll see people coming and going sometimes. And sometimes if they're leaving your session, you're going, what's wrong? And well, nothing's wrong. They just might have, a, you know, don't assume you need to concentrate and keep your train of thought going. And that, you know, you're always, you have to operate in the present, but you also are thinking ahead to the next slide and what's got to happen. And I found that the best thing to do is just to hone in to what I'm doing and say what I have to say, stay with my program and don't think about other things unless something really important comes up that you have to. Um, but one of the beauty of having audience participation is that you then get a little feedback as to whether or not they're having a good time. We kind of like to know that. So when Alan does his straws, you know, everybody's doing a demo with that. So it, and it endears people to the conversation that you're trying to have with them as well. And I think it's always nice. I do think it's nice to have a hard copy handout at your presentation as well. They have something in hand to take home with them. And sometimes people put their, um, you could provide your information, contact information at the bottom of that. If they had some more questions, I've had many people who I've contacted or have contacted me since and people I have contact when I'm gone because uh, they said something that really hit home with me and we have personal relationships as far as our, our technique in our studios and voice practice and what they've noticed in, uh, in the adolescent voice, for instance, that was a big one with somebody once. Don't be surprised if people start taking pictures of every slide that you have. That's going to happen and that's the way it goes. You also might consider the fact that you are using some materials uh, from other authors or other photos and stuff and at the end it is really nice to um, have the a list of those a citations for instance uh, giving credit to all of that and um, people will take pictures of that too and that's a good thing because it leads them to more research or scholarship or looking up things or names that you want to honor within you know even within presentations i do often along the way i will say this is thanks to so and so you know and uh, bring some people, or if you notice people out in the audience who are um, who are are people that you know within your area of expertise, it's it's kind of personal to just notice that they're there and say something and 
um, it's interesting to you too. So it can be part of your presentation. Great. I, uh, I, I'd like your talk, your thought about, you know, off the cuff or scripted. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I would say is, even if it's off the cuff, it's prepared off the cuff. Right. You know, it's like, it, you know, it's like you, you really have worked through this and it may, it's great if it seems to the audience, like you're just talking and it's just coming, coming out very naturally. Um, also, I think uh, those are great points about, you know, people are going to be getting up and leaving or coming in the middle that just happens we've all been to conferences and we've seen that happen it's one thing to be in the audience and that happen it's totally another thing for you to be the presenter mm -hmm. and you're immediately judging oh they didn't like it or oh they, you know, uh, oh there's so and so coming in the door you know this my long lost <laughs> friend I haven't seen in 10 years mm -hmm. uh, and so I, another thing there's some things uh, that you mentioned that can get people off track and, and that was great another thing that can get people off track uh, is uh, asking the audience for questions uh, in the middle of your presentation. And if if you do that, it's certainly your, your option to do that whenever you want to, but you want to be really careful that you're, you've allowed the right amount of time for that and that you move on when that time has gone because there will be people that will suck a lot of time out of you who want to ask a question. Uh, and We've all been to presentations where people don't really want to ask questions. They just want to uh, volunteer all the knowledge they know uh, about your topic yeah. uh, and and use a, que a question format as a way for them to kind of uh, add some things. So you want to be careful about how and when you seek audience input. It's always great to have that input um, and a great way to kind of defer questions that are long to answer or, you know, I, especially if it's something you're planning to cover later in your presentation is just simply to say, uh, if you'll hold on a minute, I'm going to cover that. And then if, if, if it's, if I haven't covered it adequately, uh, then feel free to ask me a question toward the end. Uh, those kinds of things. And, and do leave time for questions if that's the kind of presentation. Yeah, yeah Karen. One more thing about um, if you're doing a presentation with someone, sharing the time is not easy and and always i i will accidentally talk too long or i you know and so managing the time and limiting what you're going to say is very important because probably you have a lot you want to say and you have a limited amount of time and if in sharing presentations with someone which is a really good idea i do it often and for instance, I like to, one reason I like to do that is I want to learn everything they know. And by doing a presentation with them, I get to know them and I get to um, understand their perspective of things and share in that in a nice, close, personal way as we're getting everything ready to go. Have long conversations on the phone, do mock ups on um, Skype or something like that. You know, but you have to divide up the time right and you don't want to you have to very carefully figure out who's at, who's when and have some good segues from one person to the others. In some cases I've done it where we've gone, you have this amount of time and then it's them and then it's them. In another, it was like I did the first half and they did the second half and we both answered questions at the end. And just speaking to Alan's thing about, are there any questions? Um, Actually, that's one of my least favorite topics, uh, least favorite aspects of doing a presentation, because what if there aren't any, you know, and people are not real comfortable asking questions. Um, but I have had people in the middle raise their hand, and that there is the art of actually honing in on some of those questions if they're really good, but also the art of very politely saying that somehow we have to move on. Then one other thing I wanted to speak to is the awkwardness of those of us who are mediocre with electronics. And if you are mediocre with electronics, either have the other person do them, which I often do, um, if you're doing a, a paired up uh, presentation, or 
figure it out, learn it, and know what every possibility is of things not working out. You know, bring your thumb drive along, bring uh, uh, your laptop, make sure they have one. What if it doesn't work? All of these things have and will happen to people. Um, have, have hard copies somewhere of, of your presentation in case you have to just look at that up there instead of at your computer. You know, how are you going to look at what you're talking about if somebody else needs to use your computer and help you with your electronics? Um, map it all out and uh, plan for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, I've got one other topic to talk about and then we're going to take some questions. So if you want to write in a question or click on the raise your hand, then Paul is going to be ready to uh, uh, open up some channels so that we can uh, answer some questions and have some dialogue. Uh, I always get emails about uh, the mini recital aspect of our conference. And so let me just talk about that a little bit. Uh, we have not always kind of, well, I would say just about every conference, there are some kinds of lecture recitals or those those kinds of uh, topics that get, that, that get proposed. Uh, They've been uh, a 60 minute or so session and we've had three uh, presenters do about 15 minute mini recital uh, or a mini lecture recital if they had some aspects they wanted to talk about a particular composer, genre, uh, less performed works, works of, for specific applications. Uh, humorous works, etc. So I would think about if, if you're thinking about that and you're interested in that, uh, it's it's better actually I found and it's more uh, there's more energy in this mini recital format than uh, somebody one person having an hour long uh, lecture recital type format. We we may end up with one of one or two of those if they rise to the top. Uh, and what happens with your presentation proposals is that they all go into our system. We have a committee that reviews them all. Uh, they rank uh, all the sessions, and uh, then we look at the rankings and we begin to slot in the highest uh, ranked. Uh, presentations into uh, the overall grid of the conference uh, and make everything work, make sure we have enough coverage and variety of uh, uh, topics and we're reaching as broad an audience as possible. Uh, so that's kind of the process that will happen. We cert uh, we will, the June 1st is the deadline uh, and our last few conferences we have been able to let everybody know by early August if they've been uh, chosen and selected and then we get those confirmations out. And once we get those confirmed from all the presenters, then we send out uh, the notice to everyone who wasn't selected. Because sometimes we do have circumstances that change with selected uh, presenters and for some reason or another, they are not able to accept our invitation. So uh, we wanna make sure we've kind of accepted all those. We do usually accept a few alternates in case something happens in the meantime uh, and uh, someone is unable to come because it is 10 months later that the actual conference happens. But uh, all of that will begin to happen in August and then in October is when we actually open up the website for registration for the conference uh, for the next summer. And so we we spend that time from August to October getting all the media ready and all the schedules ready and all those kinds of things ready for the website to launch and and us to really roll out all the speakers and all those kinds of things. And we'll be calling on all those who are selected to speak to help us promote the conference uh, and and post that you're going to be a presenter on, uh, on social media and other, other channels so that we're going to have a, a great crowd there. 
Paul, do we have some questions from individuals? Uh, Daria Cook. Hey, Alan and Karen. I have a question for you. This kind of touches upon what you had said. A, a proposal to lecture and perform, but still looking for a pianist. Do I need to have the pianist spe specified in a conference proposal? And um, does this pianist count as a second presenter on the proposal? I would lecture, perform, and then have Q&A with the audience. The pianist would be my collaborator on the performance section, but I would be the lecturer. Thanks. I think you should include right. them as a you presenter. Would, that's a great question. You would certainly want to list. Mm -hmm. You would want to list them as a presenter and make sure their bio and their headshot is included. Uh, as a as a participator in that if you're uh don't have that person 100 percent secure uh, and that way we know that to expect someone we can if you were selected uh allow you to go back in the system later and add that bio and headshot uh if that's needed uh, but do be upfront about those kind of things. And, and it's perfectly obvious that that can happen, that you don't have a, a collaborator chosen yet. But, uh, some people, you know, there probably is a link to your submission uh, somewhere on that page that you yeah, submitted. View or and edit. you should be able to go back in that and edit that and then and then click submit again and it will update things. If you have any problem at all, uh, email paul at nats.org and Paul will get back with you and make sure that you are taken care of. And, and if you wanna update your application, you can do that, but you should be able to access that from your member home screen. Um, here's a question, question. from uh, Trisha Oni. Uh, do, all present, do all presenters need a recommendation? Yes. That's asked for in the process of it. Yes, we do. Yeah. Sorry. That showed in, the, it showed in the process on the sheet. Um, you'll see a place where it asks for um, a recommendation from one person. And one letter of rec recommendation from a NATS member in good standing supporting your specific session proposal is required. Would, and it must be solicited and submitted electronically through the application system. You will be asked to provide the name and email address of the individual providing the reference on page two of the form. I'm going to combine a few questions. A few Santa people will get an asked, automatic. A few people have asked um, the length of the what is the length of the session, and kind of uh, breaking that out. Uh, will presentations that only have one speaker uh, still have um, consideration? We've emphasized the presentations that have more than one uh, presenter that would, would have some preference. And another, with a co-presenter interested in a lecture demonstration and mini recital on different topics and asking if they're allowed to submit uh, two different proposals. Assuming, a lecture, a le assuming the, the length of time would be 50 minutes, uh, could they give maybe a 15 to 17 minute mini presentation within that time slot? Sure. I mean, there are all kinds of opportunities for you to structure a session in a creative fashion like that. And so uh, really propose whatever you think might be workable uh, from the standpoint of your topic. And if it's a mixture of things, that's great. Uh, I find that that's actually sometimes more interesting, uh, that you're kind of mo moving from one mode to another within a session. Uh, if you uh, also, our sessions are 50 to 60 minutes, the, the breakout session. So uh, generally we tell people plan on 50 minutes of presenting with about 10 minutes of questions uh, for uh, each session. And so that is the time limit. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, people have time to ask questions if, if that's the kind of session it is. Uh, if you are just doing a performance uh, that's not lending itself to any kind of quick Q&A, then 
obviously you could go longer than 50 minutes if you needed to. Uh, I also think, uh, you know, if you have some friends and you have a common topic, for instance, that you want to propose three mini recitals in that, you know, in that hour slot uh, in the mini, mini recital vein, and you want to kind of craft a whole group uh, of people that would do that, I think that's a great uh, thought and idea. Uh, a single presenter is not going to be So we will accept single, uh, you know, single presenter proposals for sure, and uh, they will get equal consideration. Yeah. I and I, I want to recommend too that um, I would prepare for a 50-minute presentation um, because you will always end up starting a little late or going a little longer. So as far as preparing, well, then I'm going to prepare right up to the 60-minute limit. No, I, you're much wiser to it, it always, we always get longer winded than we think we're going to, or it always takes a little longer to, if you're with somebody else and you're, you're doing performing, for instance, and you've got three performers, it, there is time in between that it takes to do that stuff. So just as we um, tell our students in preparing recitals and they wanna do every song they've ever learned, you're better off to go with shorter amount of time, real quality, and allow for the on and off and the ebb and flow of what happens at presentations. Here's a question uh, from Lori Sonnenberg. How appropriate is it to present on material and topics from the clinical voice perspective, as long as that's related to the student and teacher experience in the voice studio? Is that well received? I'm a full-time voice SLP and singing voice specialist. Absolutely, we want those kinds of things. It's uh, very important that we understand. And, and I know Lori is a wonderful speech therapist and uh, works with singers and a fine singer herself. And I have heard her present. Um, and all of the people doing this kind of work are members of our organization and important members of our organization. Uh, so please, absolutely, those things are welcome. A uh, question from Dan Mitten um, regarding the narratives uh, that we asked for. Um, where can we see a few examples of the narratives <clears throat> you asked for in your proposals? I have an outline ready, but I feel like a narrative means something more scripted. Would love to see, uh, look at a couple more examples of successful proposals, if possible. I'll see if I can find a couple and post them on the site. Uh, but I will say, and I'm I'm happy to uh, if I have time and you send me a. Uh, if, if I think formatting might be better, or you might add something here or something there to make it stronger. Uh, I'm always happy to try to help people refine their proposals as much as possible. However, I doubt I will be able to do that at, on May 31st at midnight or <laughs> June 1st at midnight. So better, if you want me to do it, better send it a little earlier than that. We've got a hand raise from uh, Rosemary Vanderhoeft. And uh, Rosemary, I can, uh, okay. uh, Unmute you if you'd like to uh, ask a question. Sure. I um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually have two questions. One is a very simple, short question. Um, I'm I'm looking to do a presentation with a collaborative pianist. Um, do both of us need to be Nats members? Like, are are both presenters required to be Nats members? They are not both required to be NATS members. Uh, so if your if your collaborative pianist is not, for instance, a NATS member, then that's totally fine. Okay. All right. Um, and then the other question I think um, was basically uh, answered. Um, I'm interested in performing a piece um, during my presentation that is related to the topic uh, that I want to present, and um, it's also related to working collaboratively. Uh, with with my pianist, um, so I'm just wondering, 
I was, the question was whether that would be a lecture recital or a regular session, and, and I think you answered that question um, just previously about, you know, doing sort of a, a, a multi, you know, a varied kind of presentations within your, within the one pre presentation, so. Mm -hmm. Good, thanks. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I would not classify that as a lecture recital myself. If, right. if you're kind of really talking about the other aspects of that, and then you're just using the performance as an example of some of the things that you're talking about in the topic. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I, I use think that as a lecture personally. Right. I think it could go both ways, depending how I wanted to to present, you know, the the material. Um, and and so the next question then would sure. be, uh, is it more likely to be accepted as a proposal if it were just a regular session or whether it was a lecture recital? I mean, you, you have more regular sessions than lecture recitals, I'm assuming. We do have more regular type sessions than lecture recitals. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I just, if it's a really, you know, if it rises to the top, it's going to rise to the top no matter right. which uh, box you check, I guess I could say that. Right. Okay. We got another uh, hand raised, Barbara Hudson, if you are. Uh, still here. I'll I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Barbara, are you there? Okay. Um, got a hand raise from Cynthia Smith. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, yep. Hi, Cynthia. Okay. Um, my yep. question is, I'm. I'm interested in doing something with a harpist. We've uh, collaborated previously and actually commissioned three different works, two of which were from Indian composers. And I was wondering what would be a good way to frame that. I, we would like to perform them. There are only three of them, but also discuss how you collaborate as a singer with non-pianists. Okay, and how long are these pieces? It's a total of probably 20 minutes. Those are, I mean, that's a great topic, I think, and it, it's, uh, it shows some diversity from the standpoint of, especially uh, perhaps the poetry and, and as you mentioned, the ethnicity, ethnic background of some of that music perhaps. Uh, and I think the topic of collaborating out uh, other with other types of instruments and other types of collaborate having other types of collaborations is really attractive uh so i'm i mean i think that would be a, a really interesting topic uh and i think you should you know sub, you could submit it either way i mean i think if you're wanting to talk more about it and talk more about the process you probably want to kind of just submit that as a regular session okay. uh if 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 it's going to take about 20 minutes to to, uh, to sing the piece and perform the piece, um, okay. then you might want to, you know, beef it up and begin kind of make it a, a three part, obviously a kind of a three part session, mm -hmm. a third of it about how, how, how do you the process that you went through and, uh, and your shared, interests in performing together, performing the mm -hmm. piece, and then of course talking about the background of, of the pieces themselves. And maybe a little bit too about the harp itself and um, people understanding what are the intricacies of how they're making the music. Um, a lot of us play piano, but very few of us play harp. And even with other um, kinds of instruments too, it's different to play with, a, to sing with a trumpet player than it is to sing with um, guitar or to mm -hmm. sing violinist so that could yeah okay thank you yeah thanks. Uh, a hand raised in from uh, Melody Fernandez so Melody if you're here we can unmute you and you can have your question Melody are you there okay we'll go to Patricia Kent are you there for a question can you hear me hi Patricia I can. Hi. Um, well, my colleague and I are proposing a mini recital of the songs of Minnesota composer David Evan Thomas, 
would it be an asset to have him share the presentation with us? That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, because he's. I, I think it's wonderful. That, awesome. <laughs> I think it's wonderful when we have composers in residence at, at the Nats conference, and we've had more and more in recent years who have come and shared in sessions, been a part of publisher showcases. Uh, I been think he's in planning on that. Hall, so. Yeah. And those kinds of things. So I think it's great uh, if you know composers are, are interested and wanting to be there. I think every composer that's come that I know of uh, has really found the Nats audience to be a great audience to be in front of. And almost all of them have ended up with future collaborations by the end of the conference through conversations they've had with you know, people who are in the conference. So it's just a really, uh, I think, exciting energy uh, to have those Great. kind of conversations Thank happening. Thank you. Um, uh, there's a question from Robin Fry Manel. Robin, would you like to ask a question? Hi, Karen and Alan. Um, Alan, you um, previously talked about you answered the question about single presenters as opposed to multiple presenters but at least on my system you completely cut out and went completely still and i didn't hear any of the answer <laughs> so i'm wondering if you would please repeat it we certainly do not discriminate <laughs> against single, single speaker presentations they are equally <laughs> weighted in consideration. So, uh, you know, bring it on. And we're we're okay. glad to have all kinds all of presenters. All are multiples. Those of us who have been. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Sorry, it throws up on you. Any other questions, Paul? Well, we've, we've covered some. Uh, uh, Several several questions have come in about mini recitals. We haven't gotten to all of them, but I think a lot of the dialogue has covered people's questions about having a, a mini recital or a performance. Um, the uh, one more question about that: um, Do you? Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in performing a piece during the presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading somebody who already spoke. Um, uh, oh, if, if I pre present a mini recital on newly composed music, does there need to be a lecture component? What's the key information you'd like to see in the application for the mini recital? Uh, I think that if you were, if you really just want to perform for 15 minutes and that's what you want to do, uh, I think that's that's certainly fine. I would say you're going to be more successful in the application process with that if it is something truly unique. You know, if you just want to come sing a 4 a song set, that's probably not going to be as well uh, rated as something new or something really unique because of its ethnic background, perhaps, or its unique compositional style, uh, and, and things like that. So you, you want to be kind of thoughtful about that. Uh, we, I would say, as, as a rule, you know, we don't have the Nats conference um, primarily for people just to come sing and do, and that's it. Uh, we really want if people want to do that, we want it to be for a really unique reason, um, such as the ones I've stated already. Another question from uh, Melody: Are you? I've unmuted you. Unmuted you. You are you back on? Her question is: The cost of bringing a pianist from Los Angeles would be too much, so using someone from Knoxville would be more cost effective. Are there resources uh, available regarding? pianists in the area. That's from Melody Fernandez. If uh, if you want to state that in your proposal, that's 
totally fine that you you know you're interested in using a perform a collaborative pianist that's from the area uh, to save on cost. That's totally okay. And uh, if your session is selected, certainly we would put you in contact with a number of people. We will have a coordinate a collaborative pianist coordinator on the committee, and they will be charged with kind of working out some of these collaborations and these needs for uh, collaborative pianists. So that will be an opportunity uh, if it presents itself. Yeah, I think that covers it. Um, here's an interesting one from Rosemary. Um, have we ever had a singer slash visual artist collaborative presentation? Hmm. I'm trying to imagine we what might that have had but I can't remember in recent years that we've had one. I've seen some very compelling ones before uh, at other conferences, and I, I think that would be um, unique and uh, compelling, uh, something you know that that would be uh, interesting to our attendees for sure. I think we've covered uh, covered some ground here, um, and obviously we can we'll always be responsive uh, to more questions. Uh, we've we've covered a very good uh, full hour here, but if you, if you have any other questions uh, uh, to uh, Alan or to um, the NAT staff, just uh, info at nats.org. Feel free to write me to anytime, president at nats.org. So happy to mm -hmm. offer thoughts and inspiration. And if you want to write Alan, that's really Wrap easy. Wrap it up. You Not can email me at Alan or specific question. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, so you have a couple of proposals and get them in. And I hope that uh, this webinar has kind of stirred some creative juices about how you can refine your proposal and send in a great proposal that makes it easy for the committee to say, oh, we must have this presentation. Uh, it's so much more enjoyable ones uh, proposals that just think, oh, it's just the greatest thing than to uh, read somebody who just sent in a paragraph and said, well, I would like to come talk X and here's my background and that's it. And that's all you get. And we do get ones like that from time to time. So uh, I think we've, over the last few conferences really refined the process and encourage people to to be complete and give us as much information as you can mm -hmm. how the topic and why it's important and uh, how it's either served you as an artist or uh, improved your work as a teacher improved your uh, work with students uh, improved their uh, ability to progress and in, in developing their artistry and their talent. Uh, there's just so much for us to talk about at the NATS conference and so many wonderful topics that that we can cover and we really want to have a wonderful diversity of topics and diversity uh, of literature presented, diversity in all aspects and ways and that's what makes uh, a NATS conference so exciting. And we do have some great plans. We're finalizing some of our uh, major presenters and our uh, major recitalists, and those are going to be uh, announced over the summer. And uh, so there's some really exciting things coming down the pike, I think, that are unique to this conference, uh, that we a couple of things that we've never done before, and uh, but that will really involve uh, a lot of our membership and their students uh, in being a part part, an active part of our conference. And so we're really excited about it and you'll be hearing more soon. So yeah. thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. And uh, we hope that you have a great week and uh, we'll look forward to receiving all those great proposals. Thanks. Thanks everybody. It's great.